Vietnam, and it is impacting our children. So from 1972 onwards, there was some information and knowledge that there was going to be a harmful impact on the children. This is one example. Our next slide is of a young man in Thailand who has some autism. He basically looks at himself. He does not relate at all to the outside world. He has cerebral palsy, so he has no way of controlling his limbs. Part of the issue that we know will happen, as I'm looking around the room and seeing a lot of colleagues from that era, as we age out, as the parents in Vietnam age out, who will take care of the children? What will be the resources? These are children like this young man who is about 30 years old now. What happens to him? And it's part of the issue that we are trying to address in the legislation. This is the other picture. You can see that he kind of sits and just looks at his hand. And that is his world. That's it. His mother is fully responsible of taking care of him from day to day. There is no other stimulation. There is not a whole lot of other impact. And part of the problem exists because soldiers came from the north to the south and were impacted by the spraying. And then when they came back home, they carried with them the impact of having been contaminated with the Agent Orange, purple, blue, whatever you want to call it, and dioxin. And so when they have children, the children have to. The next slide is, I, I just have to describe to you kind of my impression. I've been in healthcare for many, many years. I have never seen the types of birth defects and deformities and disabilities that I saw the children when I walked into this house, we walked into this house. Um, we were on a veterans for peace tour. And I saw this young person, and I thought, oh, he's a few months old. Our guide said he's 27 years old. And I thought, no, they had to mean 27 months, right? He's now about 32 years old. He is severely mentally challenged. He cannot move on his own. His mother, and you can see she is also getting older, has to carry him. They have limited resources. Electricity comes in a wire that comes through this one room cut into their room. That's all that they have. And she has a small rice paddy out back. Another example of what the spraying has done. The story of this mother and child I think just also struck me because on the wall of the home is a picture of the mother with her husband when they first got married. And you can see their hope for the future. And then he went south and was a soldier in the war. And he came back home. He developed liver cancer and passed away. And she has a child who she is totally responsible to care for. I think one of, one of the frustrations of seeing young people like this is that you know that somehow if there were some more resources, you could communicate with the child. You could provide a more enhancing environment. The mother struggles day by day to wash the child, to take care of her, and to make sure she's fed, and to take care of the home. And again, what happens when she's not around anymore? We, we, the United States government, not only destroyed the land, and destroyed the animals, and the mangrove forests, but we're talking about future, the future generation, because that's we all look to, right? Our children and our children's children. For these people, what happens? Um, there's not much of a family. The family who may have participated in the war effort scattered, they don't exist. So that type of community that one would look to to help care for children like this doesn't really exist. And this is in the North. Um, and this young woman, I 
you can see that she is terribly disfigured and her limbs are very static. She can't move. She has what was donated to an American organization, this seat that I cannot imagine would be very comfortable to sit in for very long. It's molded in plastic and she sits there. What I still find extraordinary is that the mother can understand what the child wants and what she needs. If she, I just remember there was a group of us there and she started to make some noise and mother took her inside and gave her water. She obviously understood what she needed. That was today, oh my goodness, eight years ago? No, it's 2005, uh, eight, 2008. Right. Um, but one of the many thousands and thousands of children, she again is about 30 years old at this point. So we assume that her contamination <coughs> of her birth defect was caused by a father who was in fact sprayed with the Agent Orange dioxin. This is in Albuy, so it's a contaminated area. It was, yes. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Next. Oh. Um, right, this gentleman that had served in the NVA um, came back and had a young son. And you, if you can see closely the skin condition that he has, it's called chloracne. It certainly is one of those illnesses, diseases that we associate very closely with contamination by Agent Orange dioxin. And you can see it. <coughs> I'm sorry. You, know, you can see it all over the right, his back. In addition, he's got these other terrible birth defects that cause his limbs to contracture his body to move over. Um, he's incontinent. The way that he comes outside and moves at all is for someone to go into the home and literally pick him up and take him outside. Otherwise, he'll stay inside most of the day. And again, the question is resources and availability of people to come in and help him lead the family. These two young girls we saw several years ago, their sisters walking along hand in hand, and thought, oh, this is a beautiful scene. It's Aloy. Um, it's as they come closer that you can see what's happened with one of the young girls. The next slide has the picture of the two of them together. She had excess food in her brain. Hydrocephalus, and one of the ways of dealing with that was to put shunt in to relieve the brain of all of that fluid. It may not have been timely enough because in the next slide you'll see the two of them standing together. This young girl is blind, is completely blind, and it was, it occurred because she had this hydrocephalus. Yes, the condition was relieved by being able to drain the excess fluid, but the damage existed. If there were resources, and if we had some modern technology, she might have been okay. We show this slide of an, of an orphanage outside of Ho Chi Minh City to show that, in fact, the birth defects in the children continues today. It's not something that happened 20, 30 years ago. Because the dioxin remains in some of the contaminated areas, as Paul was talking about, the old military bases that were sprayed heavily with the Agent Orange dioxin, the land remains contaminated. And children today continue to be born. And it's just here, these terrible birth defects. You can see that the children, the children are terribly disfigured. They have, a lot of them have hydrocephalus, enlarged heads that have an impact on what they can see and how they can feel and how they relate to the world. Their limbs are, are atrophied. A lot of them also have spinal damage. And the next slide. Um, we wanted to show you the slide of, of this young child who is kind of representative of a lot of the babies Part of the issue with the Agent Orange, and I, I'm 
sure you all have heard this before, but it was contaminated with one of the most harmful elements known to humans, and that's dioxin. It was produced by about 18, 20 different chemical companies, <coughs> Dow and Monsanto included, who noticed at the time that there were some problems using the dioxin, and in fact it was contaminating the surface line. And there is, I almost was going to say email, there is a memo from one of the presidents <coughs> of the company that says we recognize that this contaminant exists. We cannot slow down production to deal with this. We cannot allow the information to get out because then there would be outrage from the American public. So they continue to produce the Agent Orange dioxin. And it continues <coughs> today to have an impact on Vietnam, on the ecology, and on the children. Um, we have one more slide of a couple of the babies. Um, and we also wanted to let you know that our group, the Vietnam Agent Orange Relief Responsibility Campaign, is working with the Children of the Next Generation in the United States, an organization called COPA, Children of Vietnam Veterans. Health Alliance. Health Alliance. Health Alliance. Health Alliance. Um, Heather Bowser, who will be shown. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't take both. Well, Yes, this is a child we visited at home. Um, and here we go, right. Sorry. Go back to the other picture. I'm sorry. Um, what was stunning about seeing this child, despite all of her terrible deformities and the fact that she's been down, is a sister who has given up her life to take care of this child. Um, and you can see that she just has not a whole lot of awareness of the rest of the world, certainly of strangers who are visiting. There was a group of us who visited two years ago. Um, two of us were nurses, and we thought, my goodness, um, look at the child and look at her skin. She is in immaculate condition. She has been so well taken care of and loved by her family. She is about 25 years old. You can't tell because they have selective growth that goes along with a lot of the other disabilities. But I think what is so magnificent is seeing families taking care of the children. They need relief and they need help and they need services. The next one, right, is Heather Bowser, who I mentioned before, who couldn't be with us today because she's in Vietnam actually with her son. Heather's father was in Vietnam for about a year. He passed away a number of years ago. He was around 50 years old. He had developed severe cardiac problems as a result of his exposure to, to the Agent Orange. <coughs> we wanted to show you this picture because it was Heather visiting to do hospital. And if you look closely, you can see that Heather and the young Vietnamese child had almost the identical birth defects. So we use it to say to you, yes, we know that the Agent Orange, the dioxin, contaminated the parents, and we urge you to think about the children. The children, both in this country and in Vietnam, the children, there are different types of services that are available for the children of American female veterans who served in Vietnam. There is only one recognized illness by the VA for the children of American male veterans, and it's spina bifida. There are so many similarities between the different types of birth defects that the children of both American male and female veterans have, but we say, can't you notice that this is a result of their exposure to the Agent Orange dioxin? And one of our conclusions is that the American government doesn't want to recognize that in fact these problems have been caused by the use of Agent Orange dioxin um, and don't want to pay for it. I should mention that we did try to sue the chemical companies um, on behalf of Vietnamese nationals and we lost the case and we lost it on appeal and the Supreme Court maybe positively didn't hear the case. So we went to the legislature and 
Paul will talk about the legislation. There is one last slide of Heather's hand. Can you have that slide? Chopped oh, off on the side. Photos <coughs> done. So I just want to leave you with that and we'll go on with the, the presentations to talk about.